This is Mike Bot. Today I'm going to be doing a hybrid video on the smart air quality monitor. And the reason I call this a hybrid video is because it's going to be an unboxing and then it's going to sh quickly shift over to a 3D printing video. So basically everyone's always wondering, is 3D printing poisoning my air? Is 3D printing causing issues? Am I going to have lung issues down the road from breathing in all the volatile organic compounds or box from 3D printing? So I've decided to investigate this further and find out once and for all how bad 3D printing is for your health. So I had about 20 different air quality monitors to choose from. They all ranged from pricing from 60 to thousands of dollars. I went with something kind of on the lower end, mid tier, and something by Amazon, mainly because I do have all the uh, smart speakers around the house and everything is connected through smart speakers. So this one's around $90 Canadian plus taxes. As you can see from the box, it doesn't have a screen on it or anything. Everything is done right off your phone or your smart speaker with a display on it. So this one here is capable of measuring the particle matter, which is also called PM, the volatile organic compounds, which is VOC, V-O-C. It can do carbon monoxide detection, humidity, and temperature detection. And as I mentioned, everything will be displayed right off your phone and it apparently only takes like 10 minutes to set up once you unbox it and then it takes two days to uh, gather all the information. So for the first part of this video, I'm going to unbox it, do the seven minute setup, and then I'm going to let it sit in my 3D printing room for two days and we'll take some measurements. So I'm going to take before, during and after measurements of this air quality monitor and it'll be all one little nice compact video for everyone to see. So I'm going to go ahead and start by unboxing this thing and then uh, we'll go from there. So like most things Amazon these days, it's a nice little compact package with everything that you need to get started. So it comes with a nice little plug here a USB, micro USB cable, or mini USB, and then the actual monitor. So the monitor itself is fairly compact. This is where it um, basically tests the air quality. You got an LED thing. It's nice, sleek, soft-ish. It's plasticky and then it even has a little uh, mounting hole there and then you plug the USB in right there and that's basically all there is to the unboxing so I'm going to cut here go set this up in my 3d printing room and resume filming all right so I'm in my 3d printing room now here is the monitor I've connected it it's not plugged in yet and I'll just give everyone an idea of what I'm working with here so I have one of my printers here. This is the Bamboo P1P. It's been fully upgraded with everything basically. It's got the uh, auxiliary fan down there, hardened gears. It's got the exhaust fan, the control board fan. You name it, it has everything. It's basically a baby X1C. Over here, I got my AMSU and it's connected to my X1C. And there's my X1C. And last, I got another AMS unit here connected on my other P1P that's been heavily upgraded. So having said that, I'm probably going to place it somewhere central in my room, um, in my 3D printing room. So I'm probably so going to place somewhere. it somewhere here. Uh, don't mind the blender. That's actually part of my 3D printing stuff. I use it to crush plastic and make uh, molds basically out of the extra plastic. So for those of you that don't know what to do with your scraps, grind them down, throw them into some silicone molds and turn them into nice 3D prints. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm not going to use the actual power block because I don't have a spare power block. So I'm going to plug it in directly into USB. And then as I'm plugging it in, I'll zoom in here just so we can see what happens. All right, so it's plugged in now. The light's flashing away. You can actually hear it. Now it's ready to be synced with the Alexa app. So I'm just going to open up my app here, devices, click the plus sign, add device, and okay, view devices, blah, 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 go back, try that again, add device, 
and I'm going to look for air quality monitor. Here it is. So air things Amazon allow. So now it wants me to scan the barcode. All right. So now it's just looking for the monitor on my phone. It's found it. Now it says the device is calibrating. So calibration takes about seven minutes according to the instructions. So I'm just going to give it a chance here to do its thing. And then we'll do initial uh, measurements. Let it sit here for a day, take more measurements. And then after the two days, I'll come back and I'll finalize this video. All right, so once it's finished its calibration, I'm going to actually do another video directly on my phone and I'll go through all the different settings and options. So once that's done, I'll show everyone the initial readings, midday reading, so after one day, and then reading at the end of two days, and then I'll give everyone my opinion on what I think about 3D printing and the uh, toxins that it puts out into the air. So basically I have the Alexa app open uh, right now, and uh, I'm inside my air quality monitor. So my AC is on during this initial uh, seven minute configuration setup with the uh, air quality monitor and as you can see the numbers are fairly good because it's only been monitoring it for seven minutes so the fan sucks in the air measures it spits out a number on the alexa app humidity is a little bit high particle matter is good uh, the vox are good the humidity is well like i said a little bit high and the temperature is great once again the ac is on so as i'm going through the app here um through the actual air quality monitor uh uh, device itself you can see the numbers and it gives you tips and ranges and descriptions and basically gives you uh, the sources of what causes whatever uh, thing you're looking at specifically so uh, I will uh, as well be showing you guys what it, the measurements look like with the uh, AC on and with the AC off and I'm doing prints on both tests to make sure everything is accurate and measured the results are pretty interesting, so stay tuned to see how the rest of this video uh, pans out. All right, so I'm about to test the air quality monitor by starting three prints on my 3D printer. So it basically has a fan in here that spins and sucks in the air to smell it, um, or I guess analyze it. So I'm going to go ahead and start the prints on camera right now to show everyone that I started the prints, and then once they're done, by tomorrow morning, we'll measure the air quality again. I'll also uh, measure it just before I start to give everyone a baseline. So here's my first printer, starting the articulated kitty. Print now. Here's my second printer. Make sure the plate's clean. And here is my four third printer, not fourth. I don't have a fourth or fifth anymore, thanks to bamboo. Make sure the plate's clean again. Once again, there's the air quality monitor. Printer one starting, printer two start, printer three starting. All right, let's see how bad the air quality gets here. So at this point, I've let the monitor run for a full day. I had three prints going, which were 12 to 14 hour long prints. And as you can see, the initial numbers are pretty good especially considering the AC is on. No major concern, um, no major uh, red flags or anything to worry about. Everything is great. Even the Vok level is really good. I've heard that AC cuts down on smell and the humidity and everything. So it kind of looks like it does. Because as you're going to see in the next test with the AC off, the numbers will vary slightly. The AC also cuts down the humidity. So as you can see, the numbers are pretty stable and good. Uh, the particulate matter... That number isn't going to be affected by the AC either way. Neither is, well, carbon monoxide might to some degree, but maybe not. So here's what it looks like with the AC off. So with the AC off, you got the volatile organic compound has spiked a little bit. Uh, it, it went up to around 57, which is a little bit concerning. But I am running the three exhaust fans on all three bamboo printers with the uh, carbon filter. So these tests are with the carbon filter installed on all three printers. And even then the volatile organic compound was high. So in your case, if you don't have that filter, 
your numbers may be even higher. So you are actually breathing in some pretty uh, bad air what it, uh, from what it looks like when you're 3D printing. So what can you do to prevent this? Get a good filtration system uh, in your 3D print room. Um, I have a couple filter, uh, what do you call those devices? Um, slipped my mind now, but you can get these little devices that basically suck in the air, filter it, and give you clean air. That's one way to do it. Secondly, you can install a really good filter onto your furnace, uh, which will also filter out some of the smell. If you get the carbon filters, it's going to do a better job, but they're a lot more expensive as well. Third, if your printer supports it, you can just get a carbon filter, put it inside your printer, and that'll help as well. So for the most part, we are breathing in toxic poison, unfortunately. I don't know what kind of health effects that's going to have in the long term. If you're doing this at home, I cannot stress enough, you need to get good ventilation in your home. I have somewhat of an okay setup. It's not the best, but now after seeing this, I am going to be running several different filtration systems in that room specifically, especially if you have young kids or elderly in the house, you don't want them breathing that in. You don't want to be breathing that stuff in yourself. So this test has really opened up my eyes and I hope everyone else got the same value out of this as I did. So that's it for now. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you like this video, please hit that like button. If you didn't, let me know in the comment section why you didn't like it. If you want to see a specific video next, let me know. I do have a Hue Forge series. I have a Bamboo series. I had an Anchor series that I no longer am doing because I don't have Anchor Make. But any videos you want to see on 3D printing or whatever, let me know in the comment section and I'll do it for you because I like to work with the community and I like to work with my audience. Once again, thank you all for watching today. Mike Bot, out.